I don't know what happened to Magnus Carlsen after this controversial incident between him and Hans Niemann, but ever since, he has been playing incredible chess, maybe his best chess. If he's not at his peak, he is near his peak, and maybe a rating of 2,900 is a possibility. Right now, he's playing at the European Club Cup. We're going to go over that game today. He has the white pieces. Super Grandmaster Master Pentala Hari Krishna, rated 2717, has the black pieces. Magnus is 2856 when this game was played. Let's jump right in. Magnus begins with C4, E5, G3, and C6. This is like a C3 Cillian with the colors reversed. Uh, currently, one of the better openings against the Sicilian defense. D4, Magnus, or excuse me, Hari Krishna plays bishop to B4, check. Bishop to D2, blocking the check. The queen takes because the queen has to stay in defense of this D4 pawn. And D6, knight to C3. Taking and trading queens uh, gives white absolutely nothing. And black has a very good score from this position. So Carlson plays knight to C3, knight to F6, and E4. And basically you transpose into an old Indian type pawn structure, similar to the king, king's Indian, except the dark squared bishop isn't fine kettled, and now, of course, the dark squared bishop is not on the board at all. Castles, knight g to e2. Now, this is the game's novelty. Uh, white has more space, but the light squared bishop is technically bad. I don't know how much that really means in a practical sense, but the central pawns are on light squares. That would be the only real advantage black has, is that his bishop is a little bit better. Now, b5. The idea is that this knight on e2 is now blocking the f1 bishop's protection of the c4 pawn. So Hare Krishna plays b5, immediately putting pressure on that pawn. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and a3. Obviously, the knight can't take because it's busy defending the e4 pawn at the moment. a5, Hare Krishna wants to come in and permanently kick that knight away that is defending the pawn. So bishop to g2. The pawn is protected by the bishop. And bishop to b7. Now, computers don't love this decision for reasons I really can't fathom. Uh, I only guess they think the bishop might want to end up on d7 or e6 at some point. Uh, but bishop to b7 was played by Hare Krishna. Makes sense to me. Aiming at the e4 pawn. Castles are now b4. Hitting that knight that was defending it. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Black has space, but b4 could become a target also. Now, instead of knight to a2, trading off the e4 pawn for the b4 pawn, um, Carlson plays the stronger move, no surprise. Knight to d5, putting his knight into the center of the board. And after knight takes, pawn takes, queen to b6, black is in good shape. What if he took with the, the bishop instead? Um, that was That's another reasonable option, a little bit different, but... Uh, certainly playable. Uh, by the way, uh, if you enjoy, are enjoying the content from this channel, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification button. Uh, so after knight to d5, knight takes, pawn takes, queen to b6, rook a8, bishop a8, pawn takes, pawn takes. So now we're getting a sense of our, our position, and uh, we could be going into an end game. Um, if so, Magnus versus Hare Krishna is about as strong as end, the end game players are in the world. I mean, Carlson is the best, and right behind him is a player like Hare Krishna, a genius. And what Hare Krishna wants to do here is to play the move f5 and e4, mobilize his kingside majority, and block that bishop on g2. So what Carlson does to prevent that is play the move g4. And this is the computer's top recommendation. He wants to control the f5 square so black can't just play f5 and e4 conveniently. Knight to d7, knight to g3. The knight can go to f5 or e4. The f5 square is a little more dangerous. So Hare Krishna plays g6 to keep the knight out. Rook to c1, grabbing one of the two open files. Rook to d8, putting some indirect pressure on the d5 pawn. And now knight to e4. Knight to f6 to trade off that well-placed knight. Knight f6 check, queen takes f6. And rook to c5. This pawn is the center of the action at the moment. Magnus is defending it twice. It's being attacked twice. Now this rook at c5 here lo looks a little fragile, though. We'll see if Hare Krishna can exploit that. He plays queen to b6, hitting the rook and defending the b4 pawn. But Magnus has looked a little deeper, and he plays the move queen to e3. A very nasty move with an incredibly strong and powerful threat. 
What he is threatening is to play rook to c8. With a discovery against the queen, he can't take white's queen because rook d8 would be with check. Then he'd retake the queen. He'd just be up a rook. So queen d6, basically forced. Rook takes, queen takes, and then queen takes e5, winning that pawn and the game. A white would be winning in this position. So Hare Krishna has to deal with this rook to c8 threat. So he plays queen to a7. The idea is that if white does play rook to c8, he can play queen to a1 check, and this keeps the position uh, fairly equal um, after that move. So in response to queen to a7, Magnus plays queen to c1. Bishop to b7 is played, and now h4, playing aggressively on the king side, threatening to go h5. He can exchange pawns, open up lines, or he could play h6 and create mating threats at g7 later. Queen to b6 is played. Uh, computers like to move h6 here, so that the move h5 can be met with g5. And Black's king is a little bit safer in that instance. Queen to b6, h5 is played, now h6. And here, queen to e3. Now, here's the thing. Magnus is setting up the exact same threat as before, but it doesn't look like it because the, bi the bishop now controls this square, so it looks like it's a little more protected. And Hare Krishna plays pawn takes on h5, gh5. The best move here was rook to d6, blockading the d5 pawn and defending the king laterally. But after pawn takes, now Magnus plays rook to c8. And this is a very, very powerful move. Queen to d6, again, if he, if he takes here, right, the problem is rook takes rook is with check. And when the king moves, he's just up a rook, right? That's the, that's the problem. So queen to d6, rook takes, queen takes, and he does not take this pawn, after which black could just sort of retake on g4 and maybe keep himself in the game. But instead, he takes the pawn on h6. And now he's threatening bishop to e4 with checks on h7. That could lead to all sorts of tactics, even some mating patterns. So if a move like queen to h4 was played, just queen h5, this is a winning endgame for black. So black really is obliged to take the pawn on d5. And here, if he takes here, it would probably be a mistake. Definitely a mistake. This is an equal endgame. So Magnus has one move to win the position. Do you see what that move is? That's right. Queen to d2, pinning the bishop to the queen. And if black tries to say e4, he can still just, still just take the pawn. The pin is still there. So what Hare Krishna, again, a brilliant endgame player, decides to do is grab the pawns he can. Queen takes, queen takes, bishop takes. And now, what is Hare Krishna's goal in this position? He's got one way to salvage a draw. And this is a rule of thumb in all endgames where you're just clearly worse. He wants to trade all the pawns. He knows if he can trade off these two pawns, the pawns of b2 and f2, then he'll have a drawn position. And Magnus knows that too. So Magnus is going to try to stop that. Hare Krishna is going to try to do that. Let's see if he can succeed. King g7, king g2, f5, advancing the pawn. King g3, king to f6, and now king to h4. Magnus wants him to relinquish either the g5 square or be forced to advance a pawn. So he goes ahead and advances the pawn. He doesn't want to relinquish the square. And he would like to play the king to e5, f4, f3, and put some pressure on f2. Uh, so Magnus moves the bishop first so that it can't be hit with a tempo when the king moves to e5. The king does move to e5, and now king to g3, keeping this pawn from advancing. If it advanced, obviously, he would just lose that pawn. So here, king to d4 is played. And now Magnus plays king to f4, so that he's sort of controlling this pawn majority Hare Krishna has on the king's side. King to d3, king takes pawn, and now e3. Pawn takes, and king takes e3. And Hare Krishna has accomplished the first half of his goal. He's gotten rid of that one pawn, and now there's only one pawn left to get the draw. But Magnus plays b3. And Hare Krishna immediately resigned because he knew there was no way he could get this pawn. He cannot use this pawn to distract the bishop long enough to allow his king to come over and munch the b3 pawn. For example, if g3, king g4, uh, obviously if you play g2, then just bishop takes. And when the king tries to get b3, the bishop comes back and defends it. So a king g4, king to f2, then king to h3, and the square is controlled by the king and the bishop. Hare Krishna knew this. And 
he resigned. Magnus is playing at the peak of his powers right now. He's just tearing through everyone. And even after going over this game by Magnus Carlsen, uh, there are still some great chess you're missing out on. If you'd like to see more great chess from Magnus, be sure to check out this video right here. I am confident you will not be disappointed.